It's LA from LA Show. Thank you so much for tuning in to LA Show's Hot Topics. Please hit the subscribe button and notification bell for more. Now let's get into these topics. Hey, this is LA from LA Show. Please join me for LA Show, the podcast, now available on Spotify, Anchor FM, Breaker FM, Radio Public, and Google Podcasts. You can find me by clicking the link in my bio now. Thank you so much for tuning in. You don't want to miss it, so check it out. Hey y'all, this is LA from LA Show. Thank you guys so much for tuning back in to another episode of LA Show's Hot Topics, where we discuss some things going on with some celebrities. Today we have some very interesting topics, so please tune in, like this video, also subscribe to the channel, and turn on your notifications. And if you already have notifications on, make sure they stay on because I've been getting a lot of reports that the notifications haven't been going out. Now let's get into these topics. I got an article here from thedailybeast.com. A chart-topping rapper awaiting trial for murder got the CV in jail. Now he wants out. This was posted on April 8th of 2020. As of this week, three inmates in Broward County Jail, the massive 3,400-person jail in South Florida, have tested positive for CV. One of them is YNW Melly, the rapper behind the haunting and melancholic single Murder on My Mind, has been held in the facility for more than a year, awaiting trial on two homicide charges, which he vigorously denies. In two court motions filed Friday and Monday, the rapper's attorney, Bradford Cohen, called for an emergency release to relocate the rapper born Jamel Maurice Demons to a hospital, citing the jail's failures of oversight, environment, and medical preparedness. We have the motion filed and we are waiting on the judge to make a decision regarding the removal of Mr. Demons to a hospital setting, Cohen wrote. In a statement to the Daily Beast, I cannot comment on his condition. I can say the jail has placed him in a cell with another inmate that is positive for CV, which is ill-advised, according to the CDC. They also are supposed to be checking on him every hour and have failed to do so. Despite his symptoms, Cohen claims, the jail has failed to comply with medical recommendations like providing inmates with masks and cleaning supplies, or making hourly checkups on his condition. The guards are supposed to be monitoring him every hour, Cohen wrote in the filing. As most medical care physicians have acknowledged that they know very little about the virus, if it can worsen after getting better, it can return multiple times, and if it does return, if that individual is better or worse off the first time they had the virus. The court filings describe YNW Melly's deteriorating condition, including severe chills and heavy labor breathing, headaches and body aches, and drastic weight loss. Mr. Demons is 114 pounds, Cohen wrote in the filing. The jail is just ill-prepared if his diagnosis takes a turn for the worst. According to Cohen, the rapper is also rooming with another inmate who tested positive for CV, Again, that is not recommended by any healthcare worker. Cohen wrote in court documents, they have no idea if the virus can be mutated or passed, reoccurring between individuals. On their website, the Center of Disease Control and Prevention called the grouping of CV patients together in semi-isolation, cohorting. Generally speaking, the CDC cautions against cohorting in favor of individual isolation. They have made an exception on their website for jails, prisons, and detention centers, not for medical reasons, but due to space concerns. Some correctional facilities and detention centers do not have enough individual cells to do so and must consider cohorting as an alternative, the CDC states. The filings are not requesting permanent bond, but rather permission to place YNW Melly in a hospital setting. The rapper volunteered to foot the bill, according to court documents, paying for both his own care and the officers who will monitor him. This is simply a case where jail is not equipped 
to handle the spread of this disease, Cohen wrote. No one, not even the individuals at the jail, can assert with a degree of confidence that they are prepared for an onslaught of cases. The 20-year-old rapper began releasing music in 2017 while serving a one-year sentence for firing a gun near his school. He uploaded his most famous song, the jarring and brilliant single Murder on My Mind, about a man who accidentally kills his best friend, to SoundCloud and YouTube in March of that year. He followed up with a debut EP, Collect Call, in December. The following year, he dropped his first mixtape, I Am You, featuring Murder On My Mind and its partner song, Mind On My Murder, in which the rapper mewled over his own death. In January of 2019, YNW Melly released a second mixtape, We All Shine, which included his chart-topping hit, Mixed Personalities, featuring Kanye West. Just one month later, YNW Melly was charged with two counts of murder for the deaths of his two friends, YNW Sack Chaser or Anthony Williams and YNW Juvie or Christopher Thomas. The two young men, aged 21 and 19 respectively, had been fatally shot in October of 2018 in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Prosecutors alleged that Melly had staged the murders to look like a drive-by shooting. But Melly, who surrendered himself on February 13th of 2019, denied any involvement. A couple months ago, I lost my two brothers by violence, and now the system wants to find justice, the rapper wrote in an Instagram caption. Unfortunately, a lot of rumors and lies are being said, but no worries. God is with me. Cohen has said that he believes YNW Melly's lyrics in Murder on My Mind could be used against him in court, despite the fact that he wrote the song a year and a half before the murders took place and described a different situation. While incarcerated, YNW Melly released his first studio album, Melly vs. Melvin, in November of 2019. YNW Melly isn't the only well-known inmate to seek early or emergency release. Bill Cosby, Harvey Weinstein, Takashi 69 and R. Kelly have made similar requests. Cohen's first motion for emergency release came days after 6 9 was released early from prison, where he was serving the last month of a two-year sentence over racketeering charges. The rapper suffers from asthma and was granted compassionate release to minimize his risk of contracting the novel CV. On Tuesday, a judge denied R. Kelly's request for release, citing the singer's flight risk. It's a scary situation for all inmates in the jails, as I believe most jails think they can handle this outbreak, and my opinion is they cannot, Cohen wrote in an Instagram post. They must loosen the regulations on soap and hand sanitizer and wipes. They currently are banned because of alcohol content. Jails and prisons need to get ahead of this curve if it already isn't too late. Mm-mm-mm. Well... You know, the situation that occurred with YNW Melly, I haven't really spoke on it. However, I do find that it is very disturbing that, you know, his two friends wind up murdered. I just, I can't get jiggy with that. However, a lot of prisoners are coming out and speaking out about the conditions going on in prisons and jails revolving around the CV let me know what you guys think about this down below. And do you think some other people should be released early as well? I got an article here from hotnewhiphop.com. Yaya Mayweather hires Jay Prince's lawyer to represent her in stabbing case. This was posted April 10th of 2020. Ayana Yaya Mayweather has called on Jay Prince's lawyer, Kurt Schaefer, to defend her in her court case for allegedly stabbing NBA young boys baby mother. Ayana Yaya Mayweather is seeking the best of the best legal counsel to represent her in court as she is facing a felony aggravated assault for allegedly stabbing her fiance, NBA young boy's baby mama, LaPatra Jacobs. After the news broke last weekend that Yaya, daughter of Floyd Mayweather, has been arrested for her alleged involvement in the stabbing of LaPatra at young boy's home, the incident led to tons of of subsequent drama. Not only did it ignite or possibly reignite beef between Kodak Black and Youngboy, 
but it also caused young boy to call Yaya's famous father a couple of disrespectful names in front of her. Yaya has also been ordered to stay away from Lepatra, who ended up needing emergency surgery on both of her stab wounds. The situation is pretty serious. Yaya is making sure she has the best legal representation out there. Schaefer has successfully defended founder and CEO of Houston's rap a -Lot Records, Jay Prince, in the past. Prince was accused of ordering Ronnie Bookman to be jumped in 2007 at his gym complex due to Bookman's alleged refusal to sell his ownership stake in a local recording studio. According to Prince, Bookman ultimately admitted to committing perjury in a deposition for a separate $10 million civil lawsuit against Prince, and prosecutors subsequently dropped the case. You stupid bitch. Bow, 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 my wife. Huh? Bow, my wife. Say hi, honey, get it. Get up. Come here. Talking about, talking about this girl right here. My wife. You talking about my wife? Inside, inside my house that I paid for. Not a big dad, daddy, daddy. And not a big dad, daddy. I ain't never accepted no one. I ain't gonna hurry my life. Why? Because y'all be playing with me, bitch. I got like I need a girl for something. Nah, I give anything she ever asked me for. I ain't never asked her for nothing. She bought me two pair of shoes. I ain't, I ain't, I don't think I ever wore. I don't think I ever wore a pair of them bitches. But, but, with them black Chanel shoes. Okay. Tell me why this bitch ass nigga spoke on me from jail. What the fuck you even watching me? You supposed to be a gangster though, but you watching me from jail. Man, you is a bitch. This nigga gonna say I cooperated with the, or I, I cooperated with the police. Man, you still been well, this is very serious for little mama. Hopefully she can find some confidence, self-love within herself because it seems like she's really reaching. First of all, that's his baby's mother. So, you know, whatever they have going on, that's a separate relationship from you. And if you're his fiance, I assume that he will respect you as such. A couple months ago, we saw her run up on some female. Some are assuming that it's this female and some are claiming it's another female, but we did see Yaya get into an altercation outside of a hotel. And we can assume that this is all because of young boy. For my man type of tease. Let me know what you guys think about this situation. This is crazy. Yaya is 21 years old and facing 99 years in prison. Do you think that she'll get any of that time or what? Let me know down below. I got an article here from Billboard.com, China Rogers' cause of death revealed. This was posted April 10th of 2020. A spokesperson for the Philadelphia Department of Public Health has confirmed to Billboard that MC slash model China Rogers' official cause of death was accidental drug overdose. She was 25. At press time, no further details were available about the nature of Rogers' death. China was deeply loved and will be sorely missed, her family said in a statement on Thursday. A statement from her management team at True Panther read, Rest in peace, China. Heartbroken. All the love to those she left behind. Goodbye, Angel. Rogers got her break as a model signing to four models at the age of 14. Soon after, she became friends with ASAP Mob founder ASAP Yams and New York City awaited. It was the late Yams who gave Rogers the confidence to pursue her music career. 2013, she enjoyed viral success with Selfie, followed by 2014's Glen Coco and her I'm Not Here, This Isn't Happening EP in July of 2015. Rogers talked openly about her struggles with substance abuse and addressed her addiction with the 2016 mixtape 90. I felt crazy. I didn't want to be a statistic. I didn't want to go out that way and people be like, I told you so, or glamorize it because I don't feel like that. The seasonal depression rapper told Vibe in 2018, several years after getting clean. It was nerve wracking to be open, but when you see how many more people who are dealing with the same thing, it's good to have some kind of example of someone you didn't expect to be going through it. 
My condolences go out to her family, friends, and her fans. This is such a moving story because a lot of the young people in the black demographic get overlooked in the opioid crisis. And it's being pumped in the music so much that kids grow up thinking that popping pills is cool, drinking lean is cool. And that stuff is really out here killing people. A young, beautiful girl, and now her life is gone at age 25. This is just so tragic. Let me know what you guys think down below about this situation. Once again, thank you guys so much for watching. Please like this video, subscribe to the channel, and also turn on your notifications for more. I'll be back.